Hey YouTube, this is Chris with Packet Pioneer, and today I wanted to show you about the TCP stream graphs. So I'm going to start off with just the first one, TCP sequence graph. That's the Stevens graph. So uh, I've got a trace file open, and this includes a file transfer that was going from one machine to another. Now when you're using the TCP stream graphs, and these can be accessed from statistics, come down here to stream graphs, a lot of times these stream graphs are best used when you are moving data from one machine to another. So if you have an application that does a lot of different quick transactions or has a lot of application turns, uh, these graphs aren't going to be as useful to you. You'll still be useful, but not quite as much. Typically, these really help us to see issues when there's a lot of data moving from one point to another. And that's what's happening in this trace file. It was just a slow data transfer. So I'm here under statistics, TCP stream graphs, and I'm going to just hit this first one. That's what we're going to focus on in this video, time sequence Stevens. Let me just bring that stream graph in. So here I had clicked on a packet that actually had measurable payload. It was data going from one side to the other. And I can see up at the top, I've got my IP addresses and my port numbers. Now the Stevens graph, what it does is it shows me sequence numbers versus time. All right, so again, sequence numbers, that shows me byte for byte data moving from one side to the other. And as we've discussed on another video, those sequence numbers will gradually increase through the lifetime of the TCP connection, uh, especially in the direction where data is flowing. We also see these pauses uh, in this data stream. So that represents time where the sequence number was not increasing. So typically in a data transfer, that means that's a period of time where I was not sending. Data had come to a halt. Now that can happen for different reasons, but it's nice to be able to see it here, especially in these graphs. Uh, I can see that I saw this pause over and over and over and over again. Now with the Stevens graph, we can click on zoom and we can get in nice and tight to one of these uh, sequence increase points where data is flowing from one side to the other. And we can see that data was moving pretty quickly. You see down at the bottom, time in seconds. Uh, so this is not a huge amount of time, and I saw a, a jump in data. So that's good, and if we want to, we can get in here pretty close. Each one of those dot represents a packet. Just going to hit reset. So my goal with the Stevens graph is to see data go up as sharply as possible from the lower left up and to the right. Okay, so I want to see that nice and smooth, no breaks, and just data going as quickly as possible. But like here, this is a bad transfer. I see it choppy. It's almost got this stair step kind of behavior. The nice thing is that if I hit drags, I can see this circle appear, and I can just click on one side or the other of that flat line. And once I click and I close and I go back to my trace file, that graph will jump me right to that period of time that was measured by that flat line. So here I can see I've got 19 milliseconds of time. Packets around it, I can see that the time was much less in between packets. I'm talking about sub millisecond on the microseconds. Then all of a sudden I have this 20 millisecond pause and then that goes away. Well, really this boiled down to a problem with a TCP window on the receiver. It was filling up and it just took 19 milliseconds to dump out that data to the application and then begin to resume the file transfer in that direction. But the thing is, is I saw it happen over and over and over and over again. Now, if I'm just looking at this from the raw packet level, my eye can jump over that pretty quick, right? I don't see any retransmissions. I don't see any ugly black lines. And as I'm scrolling down, unless I really know what I'm looking for, there's another 19 uh, millisecond pause. My eye can jump right over that and I miss it. However, when I'm working with that stream graph, it really helps those gaps and pauses and hangups in my file transfer really jump out to me and I can see right when in the trace file it happened. So hopefully this helps with Steven's graph. It's just simply a graph that shows us the incrementing sequence numbers over time and how smooth was that file transfer. So I'm gonna cover the other stream graphs on some other videos, but hopefully this helps you make use of the TCP Steven's graph. Take care.